In this video, we're going to focus on drawing galvanic cells. So how can we draw a galvanic cell based on the reaction shown below? And we need to identify the anode, the cathode, and we have to show the direction of the electron flow and the migration of ions in the salt bridge. Now the first thing we need to do is separate this overall reaction into two half reactions. So let's focus on zinc. The oxidation state of zinc changes from zero to plus two or two plus. So the oxidation state of zinc is increasing. Whenever the oxidation state goes up, you're dealing with an oxidation reaction. If the oxidation number goes down, you're dealing with a reduction reaction. So zinc is associated with oxidation based on the way the reaction is written. So zinc ionizes into the zinc two plus cation and it loses two electrons. Oxidation is always associated with a loss of electrons. Now the other half reaction must be reduction. The oxidation state of any pure element in its natural state is zero. So Fe changes from two to zero. So the oxidation number is decreasing. So that's associated with reduction. So we have Fe two plus and it acquires two electrons turning into Fe uh, solid metal. Anytime the electrons are on the right side, it's an oxidation half reaction. If the electrons are on the left side, it's a reduction half reaction. Now you need to know that the anode is always associated with oxidation and the cathode is always associated with reduction. So the iron electrode is the cathode and the zinc electrode is the anode. So with this information, we can now draw the galvanic cell. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need two compartments, or basically two beakers. And we need to place an electrode inside each beaker. Let's fill it with water. So I like to put the anode on the left side. And I'm going to put the cathode on the right side. So the anode is the zinc electrode. And the cathode is the iron electrode in this example. So I'm going to use a wire and attach it to a voltmeter. Now, electrons will always flow from the anode to the cathode, and that's just a rule, so make sure you understand that. So now we've indicated the direction of the electron flow, and we've identified the anode and the cathode. So what we need next is a salt bridge. Now we need to identify the electrolytes in the solution. So since I have a zinc electrode, I'm going to use zinc sulfate as the electrolyte for this solution. Now I'm going to use the standard concentration of 1m, 1 mole per liter. And on the other side, I'm going to have a 1 molar solution of iron 2 sulfate. Now let's talk about what's going to happen. We know that oxidation is going to occur at the anode. And so at the anode, zinc loses two electrons. So the electrons flow from the zinc anode to the iron cathode. Now at the cathode, the iron ions in the solution, they're going to travel towards the cathode and pick up two electrons. And so they're going to turn into iron metal. So a zinc atom is going to leave the electrode and enter the solution as the zinc 2 plus ion. And an Fe2 plus ion, it leaves the solution and deposits itself on the cathode. So the mass of the anode decreases, but the mass of the cathode increases over time. Now, at the salt bridge, the cations are going to travel towards the cathode. 
the cations are the positively charged ions. So in this case, zinc is going to go from the metal into the solution and eventually it's going to flow through the salt bridge. So the zinc ions will flow in this direction. And then the sulfate ions will flow in the opposite direction. So we may have to mix the salt bridge with an electrolyte. If you mix it with zinc sulfate, the zinc ions in the salt bridge will travel in this direction towards the cathode, and the sulfate ions will go towards the anode. So whatever the ions that are in the salt bridge, the positively charged ions will flow towards the cathode, the negatively charged ions will flow towards the anode. Make sure you understand that. So that's the migration of the ions in the salt bridge. And so that's basically it for this type of problem. Now, if you want to calculate the cell potential, you need to look up the values and the standard reduction potential. The standard reduction potential for this in its reverse direction is negative 0.76. But when you reverse it based on the way it's written here, this is going to be positive 0.76. But when you look it up in a table, this reaction is written in reverse compared to what you see it right now. And so it's going to be negative 0.76. Now, in the standard reduction potential, you're going to see this reaction exactly the way it is written. And this is going to be negative 0.44. So to calculate the overall cell potential, you need to add up the cell potentials for the individual half reactions. And for a Gavonic cell, the standard cell potential will always be positive. So if you add 0.76 and negative 0.4, I mean negative 0.44 rather, the cell potential is going to be positive 0.32 volts. And so that's it for this problem. Now there's one more thing I want to go over for this problem, and that is the cell notation. So on the left side, we're going to put the information associated with the anode. And on the right side, the information that is associated with the cathode. So the anode is the zinc electrode. And we need a single vertical line to separate the solid phase from the aqueous phase. So in the aqueous phase, we have the zinc 2 plus cation. So that's dissolved in the solution. And we need a double line to separate the first half cell on the left with the second half cell on the right. On the right side, we have the Fe2 plus ion. And then we need a vertical line to separate the aqueous phase from the solid phase. We had an iron electrode as the cathode. And so that's the cell notation for our first example. Now let's work on another example. So let's say if we're given the reduction potentials of two half reactions. Draw a Gavonic cell based on these two reduction potentials. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try it. So what we need to do is identify which reaction is the oxidation reaction and which one is the reduction reaction. Now for a Gavonic cell, the cell potential must be positive. So we need to adjust the reactions such that the overall cell potential is positive and we can't have electrons on one side of the equation. On one side it has to be on the right and in the other reaction it has to be on the left. So if we reverse the second reaction, this will be negative 1.09. And if we add that to negative 0.23, that will not give us a positive cell potential. So we have to reverse the first one. So if we do so, it's going to be nickel turning into the nickel 2 plus cation. And so the cell potential is going to change from negative to positive. Now the second one we don't need to change. We need to make sure that the electrons are on different sides of the equation for the two half reactions. They can't be on the same side. It won't work that way. 
Now, looking at these two half reactions, which one is the anode and which one is the cathode? Which one is the oxidation half reaction? Which one is the reduction half reaction? Whenever the electrons are on the right side, it's always associated with the oxidation reaction. And if they're on the left side, it's associated with the reduction half reaction. And oxidation always occurs at the anode, and reduction always occurs at the cathode. So that means that the nickel is the anode. But what's the cathode? Because bromine is a nonmetal, it cannot conduct electricity. So if you have a nonmetal, you cannot use that as a cathode. Instead, you can use a platinum cathode. It's an inert electrode. Or you can use graphite, which is a carbon-based electrode. But platinum is more common, so we'll probably go with that one. Now, if we want to calculate the overall cell potential, we simply need to add those two numbers. So 1.09 plus 0.23, that tells us that the cell potential for this reaction is positive 1.32 volts. So keep that in mind, for a galvanic cell, the cell potential must be positive. And if we wish to write the overall net reaction, we can just cancel that stuff and then simply add. On the left side, we have these two. So it's solid nickel reacting with aqueous bromine. And then on the right side, we have two bromide ions in aqueous solution. And the nickel, two plus ion in aqueous solution. And so that's the overall reaction for this example. But now let's sketch the galvanic cell. So this is going to be the nickel electrode, and this is going to be the platinum electrode. And so we're going to have a wire attached to a voltmeter. And so we have the anode on the left side and the cathode on the right side. So the electrons are going to flow from the anode to the cathode. Now we need to have a solution in both containers. And so I'm going to use a one molar nickel sulfate solution. On the other side, I need a one molar bromine solution. And also I need bromide as well. So I'm going to use a one molar sodium bromide solution. Sodium is inert in an aqueous solution. And then we need a salt bridge. So let's not forget that. So I'm going to soak the salt bridge with nickel sulfate first. So the nickel cations will travel towards the cathode. And the sulfate anions are going to travel through the salt bridge but towards the anode. So keep that in mind. The cations flow towards the cathode. The anions, the negatively charged ions, they flow towards the anode. Now the last thing that we need to do is that we need to write the cell notation. So going from anode to cathode. So the anode is the nickel electrode. And then in this solution, we have the nickel 2 plus ion in the aqueous phase. And then let's use a double vertical line to separate the anode half cell with the, the cathode half cell. So on the right side, we have bromine in the aqueous phase. And we also have bromide. bromine is going to change to bromide. For the cathode reaction, it's going like this. It's going from reactant to product. So bromide is the product, and then bromine is the reactant. And then the electrode that we're using for the cathode is a platinum electrode. So this is the cell notation for this particular problem. And so that's it for this video. So hopefully it gave you a good idea of how to sketch a uh, galvanic cell or a voltaic cell. Thanks for watching.